in Asia, so it's going to be a sponsorship talk. I promise you there's going to be a code. This is going to be code as well. But, and it's going to talk about scaling on Asia 3.0. And so how many of you like heard about Asia? <laughs> <laughs> See, no one raising their hand, right? Okay. So how many of you have flown in Asia? Do you like it? Okay, of course why. <laughs> So before I begin, I just want to like ask a question, like a couple of questions. Like, how many of you from Malaysia? Yeah. From overseas? A Python developers? For the rest? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, how many of junior and senior? Like junior, how many juniors? Like any juniors or students here? Okay, so there's some students. Okay, cool. The light. Not on. <laughs> okay, cool. So before you anyone like flew in from Kelai, right? Just to let you know, the Kelai down was not related to Asia. I know some of you like come here asking me. So I just want to clear out it's not related to us. We are Kelai, Kelai too, but it's not related to us. It's for the Malaysian airport and stuff. And uh, just remind me, I need to talk slow. So it's not no clear. Just throw me something or raise your hand or something. Should be good enough. So I'm just gonna start with it and talk really slow because it's a sponsorship talk and my boss asked me to talk slow as well. So just introduce myself, my name is Steven Raj and I'm an organizer for KLJS and also Junior Dev. So KLJS and Junior Dev is, is basically a monthly meetup with you. It's JavaScript and also a, a Junior Dev is for Junior Developers, helping the Junior Developers to grow and learn and stuff to improve their uh, skills and mentor mentorship kind of thing, the monthly thing. And I also organized a Ruby conference last year, which we had to like close to 250 people for that. Uh, with Gojek as the main sponsor. Uh, and also, I'm a software engineer at Asia. So, uh, you can ask me a technical question during the later QA. I'm putting a more like English kind of thing later on. Uh, I'm part of the DevHop team, so we actually take care of a lot of stuff or shit. So, yeah. And I graduated a law degree, so I just put in there, so I, and I went to the right part, take a tag, it's the right way to go. The pay is more there, put here, the, with the tag itself. And I don't have to stress out middle of the night or work long hours with paperwork or what. So just made a decision with go with the tag side. And so far I'm having fun, it's a good time. So I've been like three years now, so it's pretty good. And I just want to ask this question. This, some people might have seen this, since there's a lot of familiar faces. Will you deploy on a Friday 5 p.m. and it's a long weekend? September is just a lot of long weekend of uh, September, right? How many of you will deploy? Just okay, keep it yourself. I'll come back to this later on. So let me like go to the main crop of the uh, sponsorship talk itself. So these are the agenda I'm going to talk about. What's going on with Asia? You're hearing a lot of stuff like tech and Tony talking about tech stuff and. Uh, Asia moving to Asia 3.0, and what is asset, the numbers, the, how many requests we're getting, like analytics stuff, and uh, deployment, what we have, certain services with Python, we're running on uh, uh, on Py Python and stuff, deep link, the infra, a bit of architecture. Also, Ava, if you heard about Ava, that's something we're going to talk about. It's a bit surprise. I also don't know, I actually forgot about their surprises, so we, I'll figure out later. And this is the news, so I took from Star, so Star didn't pay me by the way, it's just that they have a good airline, so I just put everything Star. So you hear that they become a travel technology company and Asia 3.0 to help save costs and else. So I can tell all this, save costs is the right thing. We always want to save costs, trust me. No matter what way we do, it's always about saving costs. And the question of, so what's going on with Asia and like the tax side, right? I'm going to answer you. This was a few years back on your this, slide the website and how is it compared to now like so many of changes happening you can see a travel a flight promo and deals going on there's hotel and uh, trips so if you see a lot of tabs there and our with the Tokyo new door we have a new airport Narita right so you can check it out there as well but compared to this it's just airline just buy a flight ticket so just you just want to go fly from Kela to somewhere in anywhere side of the world that's what you wanted but now we're going beyond that Beyond that, going to the like, travel, getting a package, hotel, uh, big pay, logistic. And you also have a chatbot. If you notice, there's a small there, chatbot called Eva. I, it's, a, it's a good, I think she's okay. Yeah. You, can try, you can try talking to her. So, 
test it out for us so we can improve it more. And this is the app we have now. I know it's not like, it's, we are trying to move, so it's slowly moving. It's like the reverse of like what Amazon did. Amazon is already so far, Traveluka is already far, but we're doing the reverse way. From airline, it's become like super app. So we see the holiday packages. You're going to see a lot of good holiday packages you can do with it. You have a bag, a meal sets, and hotels, and our shop, and fine flight. Our shop, you should try it out, duty free shop. So you can get it on your flight itself. But how we run this is another thing, right? So this is one service, this is one service, this is another service. So we have a lot of services running on single app. And this is what Asia.com. So the idea is airline is different from Asia. So Asia.com is separate from a airline itself operation. That's why M4. So everything comes out of Asia.com. For example, the teleport, which is the logistics side of it, which is a very good business, but uh, which they're doing with it. And the Suntime and like, which they're going to open a couple of restaurants about Suntime, by the way, you can check it out if you love their food. So it all comes under like Asia, which is Asia.com stuff. And going beyond that, we are going to be data driven. We take a lot of data. We have a data team dedicated for this. They are using a lot of Python for that, just to uh, do its processing and like uh, predictive analysis and stuff. So now I'm going to talk about numbers. The numbers, real numbers, like a lot of people are looking forward, right? What you want to do know about the numbers. This is probably the normal numbers do you have compared to Traveluka, Expedia, and Asia.com, right? This is outdated, by the way, for five, six months ago. We have like, what you notice is that we actually have 65 million visitors. And that's the number of websites you have to serve. And the app is 32 that we have to serve. It's a lot of traffic. But valuation wise, we're still the lowest. So we're trying to go there. But how are you going to, with the app download of visitors in the market domains of Asian, how are we going to leverage on this and let it provide the best experience with the website and app for the customer, right? And talking about this, no one knows as a lot of people know this, but we actually have like 300 million, this from January until now, 300 million of daily recommended users on the side, and 26 million of bookings happening on the side. And we are flying over across 24 countries, maybe beyond that, how many, I don't know how many routes we're going to opening, like 360 routes and like 90 million annual passengers. That's freaking a lot of people to serve, a lot of like happy and happy people here to serve. So that's why we have AWA, right? To treat like give it a good experience for them. And coming for a tech side, so guess how many requests per second we get? Yeah, thirty K requests per second. That's the highest we have. That's a lot. And for APIs itself we have a like, two to four K continuous slides per day serving our APIs. And they have, we have the highest of uh, people on concurrently on the site is three point four million. That's the highest we had. And thirty K requests per second itself like pushing outside and uh, our cloud provider as well. So you know, I'm going to tell which cloud provider we are using, but yeah, we are pushing them as well. So it's a lot, a lot of pressure. And I'm part of the asset. It's brand new, so it's probably a year something. It's software engineering and technology side. So we just focus on software, the website, entireasia.com, uh, BigLife, everything is under this. So we are like actually a tech, tech shop for them, developing in-house everything. No more like outsourcing stuff and stuff. Everything is in-house now. We are building it from scratch with your own developers. Actually, two of them are here, so you can just talk to them. One is related to the payment, another communication side. So if anything wrong with the payment, go find that guy. I will let you know which guy is this. He's just hiding behind there. <laughs> so that guy there. <laughs> so what is asset, right? So this is something like, we have a currently like 100 plus people and continues to grow. We are growing more and more. We're trying to double the team. We have location across three countries, Bangalore, Kuala Lumpur, and Singapore. We have five people in Singapore. And uh, Bangalore, we have like 30 to 40 people. We are continuing growing there. KL, we have 30 to 40 people. We are continuing growing. My teams, their pop teams, really need people, more people. So, yeah, we are, I'm actually quite overloaded too. So, yeah. And we're doing a lot of stuff. So, exciting in house. We're doing a lot of building in house instead of like taking a third party off the shelf. We're building ourselves, most of the stuff. And these are the teams in assets. So, assets like we call it for software and tech, technology company, right? So we have 13 plus teams, and they have a very unique name. Come up, they have to come up with their own unique name. Some of it called Minions, Sherlock Holmes, Autobots, and there are a few more names. Yeah, we all related to the cartoon of movie characters. But they, each team have their own specific role of like how they want to uh, grow or what service they're going to manage it. 
So we have a payment page. If you go to the payment page, it's just one page, but a lot of things going on. Payment is probably one of the like huge things. <laughs> so they have like three managers just on the payment page stuff. <laughs> so imagine that. I believe you are also expanding the data science team. Where do they fall? Do they fall on the No, it's a data team is totally different. I'll come to that later. Okay. So uh, we have a home page. We have a team just specific for home page and flight status. So if you go to how many people check flight status, the website. So you just go there, just a service running behind the scenes and stuff. We're catching and stuff and leading to real time traffic and their flight. And we have a member of SSO as well. That's a real headache for us to actually manage. Just there's a lot of stuff to do and that and check in. And we have a problem with check in. There's one team just managing on check in, we're building that as well. And therefore, therefore it's the one who oversees everything and the blood in between. We face to people fine when we have trouble. <laughs> so and communication is like this the one he's doing the communication, but AY is a separate team. It's like another team. AY is the chatbot itself. I will come to the AY as well. It's uh, quite something like very nice to use if you don't like to talk to human. So and yes, we decided to migrate to Python a couple of years ago. So I can tell you the entire thing that you see on AAJU.com is not on .NET, it's all Python, back end. So we are using payment page, it's Python 3, remember? The rest is still Python 2.7. We're still are planning of migrating slowly. We are moving all out in Python itself. And yeah, we had some troubles with .NET, so why? No more vendor locking, so we don't want vendor locking. We want more open source, and of course, a decent CLI, right? <laughs> so, and much more versatile, more agile, and more flexibility and freedom. We have a lot of open source community here, and a lot of developers like, like Python and like to code in Python. It's much easier to learn and grow people as well, from junior to senior, like from Python instead of .NET. It's a bit hard, and that's why we are here in PyCon, right? I'm going to go to the next slide, and uh, just last uh, ten minutes. Okay, go. Cool. So this architecture of it, I'm not going to entirely spill out all the uh, architecture. You able to show, able to if you look at search carefully, you able to like connect the dots. You figure out how it works. I, I'm not allowed to say the entire thing. So either you come talk to me later on, or you figure out yourself. Okay. So the first part is like the current architecture of it. We're using GKE, GA. GA is by, by the way is Google App Engine. So all the teams that are running right payment or services, flight stage, everything is running on Google App Engine itself. So App Engine is not like Kubernetes, it's like a, if you heard about Heroku, like Heroku, but it's more beyond that. You have a lot more capability shipping uh, splitting traffic as well. It's much easier when you're doing a A B C D E F G, you have a lot of testing. If you want to do that testing, it's pretty useful. And we have a CDN WAF in the overhead, we use a separate service for that. I will come to that using a cloud provider called Alibaba for the WAF and CDN. And for LB, we're using AWS, so we're still in the midst of migration to GCP. And Kong is actually not King Kong, it's actually a Kong gateway. So we're using the Kong gateway for our API, backend and everything. Everything is actually an airline uh, operation management system. We actually rely a lot of them, and a lot of airlines are using it, like Tiger Airways and other airlines. Uh, mm -hmm. Canadian, Canada, Canadian airlines as well are using it. It's just an airline operation that we see when you're buying a ticket or checking the counter itself. Everything is the backend is the navigator. So it's go through them, it comes back to us. So we deal a lot of like API calls and stuff. So it's Kong taking the lot of uh, services. And the backend APIs and all the services go through Kong and come back to us. And this is how the simple architecture of it. But of course it's bigger picture than this. What's the future? We are going to go into Kubernetes. Too much traffic. We can't like take the traffic anymore. Even like App Engine is nice, but behind this App Engine we don't know what's going on. So how we want to manage the app engine like if you don't know what's going on and try to fix to understand the problem. We realize that it's about time to move to Kubernetes. So we try to figure out how Kubernetes works. It's not easy, so we're still learning. So the growing part. So that's the good thing about Asia is like we always explore new stuff, try to learn and try to use it. So we really like break some stuff, yeah, but still go ahead with it anyway. And what we code in, for me DevOps, we, I can pretty much code in any language I want whatever works and like whatever solves the problem. But at the moment, uh, we're using Python mainly. Angular is the front end for everything. We also PWA by the way. Uh, I will come to that later on. We use Go as well for certain part. React is something like we are exploring. Uh, Node.js for some of our services. For like example, like a uh, chatbot or something. That's something we are using. And we also constantly like exploring a bit of Vue.js as well. 
So one of the tools that we build is like can contain everything with the airline operation, right? What we're getting is from soap. So who likes soap? <laughs> soap. And our services like we have a lot of problems with the soap, right? We don't like soap. So we try to do our own with the Python. Behind. This is tool is built with a Python, connect to REST API, and so the navigator is down there, right? It gives out in soap and takes back in soap as well. So we need to connect with REST API to the rest of the projects. And the main front end is the PWS stuff and it's going on the front. We have Python apps and Golang as well as projects. We have this is like probably hundreds of projects. It's only three I'm putting there, for example. So for example, this is the part that actually the thing Python have, we have a tool, a wrapper, which converts from soap to REST, which, is, which means that from SML to JSON file, and then it takes the JSON file, updates it back to convert to the SML file. From soap to REST is okay, but from REST to soap is not easy because SML needs to be in a certain format. So that's where you like need to go to a dictionary like, uh, the library you're using and check the namespace, validate the file, construct it, convert back to SML. Especially like narrator which runs the airline operation is very important. And yeah, sometimes you rely on them a lot. So I'm just gonna do a quick demo because I promise you some code, right? It's a, I need to do show my Python code. I'm not allowed to show the code from the project stuff, but if you come talk to me, I probably can show some how we work and stuff. But I'm just gonna quick one. So what happened is just we're using an app engine. I just recorded already, so I just want to start. It's just using an app engine. I'm doing how we deploy it. We use the cloud app deploy, but of course we have a CI CD. Our CI CD is basically running on a uh, GitLab CI. So we're running a GitLab CI, which is automates the stuff from uh, the deployment. When they push, when get it, just deploy it all the way to the app engine and stuff. So this is simple hello world. The format is like concept is pretty much the same. And I'm gonna just play it so you can see it. And sometimes the good thing about GCP itself, you can do a lot of debugging. So I'm gonna de deploy, I'm deploying to the app itself. It's just a simple hello world YAML file. I mean, I mean um, Python app. Yeah, it's, quite, it's gonna take some time because the internet was earlier was like well, Wi-Fi was quite slow. Oh, sorry. So, yep. You changed my screen. What? It's okay. I have a lot of time. Don't worry. <laughs> Let me do this. Give me a sec. Is it frozen? Oh, okay. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. Oh, sh. I'll just mirror your screen. I can't. Clean up your desktop. Ah. <laughs> I can't clean up my desktop. <laughs> another, another desktop and another desktop. No, I just. Okay, cool. <sighs> so much effort. <laughs> just for you, good common sense. Anyway, so what I'm doing is just deploying the thing to Python. So I know it's a bit blur. But it's just going to deploy a simple hello world to the Python itself with a dcloud app deploy command. It's how easy it is, easy it is to deploy something to the Python uh, so That's how we do it with CI uh, CD. Once we run the smoke test and integration, what the test itself. And we go to the project. This is my personal project. So yeah. Because the real project has got a lot of stuff. And we go to the app engine and like find the instances and stuff. Just to do some debugging and something. These are services. It's pretty much how we do actually on daily basis. We want to debug something, right? What's going on in the code. It's like imitate what I'm showing. So I'm just going to debug this and the code will be there itself because of the G-Cloud app engine. And I'm just going to like find a log point, put a log point, try to debug it. So if you see it's here, I'm just going to put a line of a self response with a logger point thanks to the, it's the previous one. So I'm just going to add another one with a uh, log point. And once that's added, it's gonna like I'm gonna refresh the page and I'm gonna go back and uh, see where what's the error is gonna point us to us. So we use this a lot to actually pinpoint sometimes what goes wrong. Because the user usually comes back to us, but how are we gonna debug it if we don't have the screenshot or 
the recording of what happened. So it's one way of us like back can try to debug what's goes wrong and stuff. So from here I'm gonna just pull up the the log itself. So the log is gonna show me the uh the logger point, which is the where it's right. I was running on the Wi-Fi earlier and like quite slow, so <laughs> so that's where it is. So you can see where the point help the logger points help us in debugging. So other than that, we also have like a couple of stuff going on. And uh, other than stack driver debug, you have stack driver monitoring and stack driver logs, which I see the logs helps a lot whenever something goes wrong. Like whenever some people say something wrong in the server or app engine wrong this app, although the engineers might be in India or what, we can actually go through and assess their app instances and look through their logs and figure out what actually went wrong through the log itself. Log error code of what's the code 502243, something the code and figure out what's went wrong. So just doing a simple, this the simple hello world. It's not clear, but it's just simple few lines of a hello world uh, uh, Python app and, and main uh, file. So just should be fun. So I'm just gonna quickly gonna stop this because there's nothing much here. And yeah, go back here. I'm just gonna show here the basically the main dashboard of the app engine. It's something we do as well, but we're going actually monitoring it. We're going beyond than that for the app thing. We are building our own observability tools. Based on Python and Go as well, so we try to observe what how what the developers are doing, and uh, what the developers are doing, and like pushing it forward and stuff. <coughs> so I'm just going to go back here again. Since I showed you some code, I'm just going to oh, recall a bit of this one. So before that, I need to do this again. Okay, cool. So remember the app I was talking about. Just so, but now I'm going to talk about the app itself, right? Let's go on to that one. So this I already did it. So talk about infra a bit. So this main part, how we're going to talk about infra, right? What we're using on the backend and like what service are we using? We are using all four. That's how crazy it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, but ninety percent of what you're seeing is running on the GCP. We are migrating to uh, GCP. If you know, it's a partner of Google, right? But yeah, Ali Cloud. Uh, we're not using the cloud, we're using the DNS, uh, we're using the WAF, uh, also the CDN, we're using Alibaba, thanks to the China market, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, forced to. <laughs> so, and AWS, some of it is still running on AWS, especially some of the payment page is running on AWS, it's also doing speed to traffic, some GCP and AWS. So some people might see on GCP, some people will be seeing the on AWS. Azure, some of it is still there, we're trying to get rid of it, slowly, but there. Stuff that we use, yeah, this some of the stuff we use, but actually we're using more than that. But one of the biggest users is like stack driver monitoring and BigQuery. BigQuery we use a lot. It's freaking useful, trust me. And thanks, that's one of the best things for our GCP, I guess. So, and Kong API is the why we're doing for our gateway API gateways. We're not using the G, uh, GCP's API, we're using Kong's. Um, and GA is the, you know, like, it's an app engine, so but we are trying to move to GKE. So one of the Kong actually relies on Kubernetes. So some of the services still are uh, running on the Kubernetes of GKE. And uh, we try to use a source repo on GCP. So yeah, trust me, we try that, it's the bad idea. There's no pull request and merge request. So imagine that. So that's the main reason they actually move to, we are forced to use it because it's Google. So we need to try it out, say them. Yeah. We, and we try it out first, we say, okay, this is not a good idea, not helping the developers at all. So we move to GitLab. So we're using GitLab and we realize that CI CD is good as well. Not really entirely good, we're trying to find a better tools, but at the moment we are using GitLab CI integrated with the code in the GitLab. So we pull request and proper code to increase the code quality so that we can serve the customer better, right? And we use the load testing using Locus. So that's a very good tool by the way. And Alibaba WAF is the one handling our WAF system. And let's talk about a bit of a deep link, right? So deep link, a lot of people heard deep link, but we use it internally. So, uh, let me go to the right side. Okay, one of the how the dipping works in Asia, right? We have a lot of services, different pages, home page, payment page, shopping is a separate page. But each team need to communicate with another team. How are you going to do that? So with the data transfer and encryption start. So we have called we created our own with the Python called dipping, the tool which actually allows the data to transfer from shopping to the payment page, transfer in encrypted way. With a deep link key, it encrypts and it decrypts the data and communicates from one to another based on that. 
So this is something that we should internally, one of the tools that we are using inside. And talking about moving forward, right, unified interface. Yep, we are using PWA. So some of the stuff you see is like PWA and HTML. It's like much of like micro file and stuff, efficient travel. We try to improve the performance because we're not only saving Malaysia, we're saving a lot of Southeast Asian country. Some of it doesn't have a good internet. But we still want our ticket sales to go up, right? So why to reduce maintenance? It actually helps in quick releases from mobile and web together. It's also release of like multi data density and also makes developer life and our life a bit easier. So what we're using so far? So we're using for more PW on the app level tracking, passing data to payment, navigation, uh, user section management, it's one of the stuff we're using a PWA, and also the change currency. We're also using beyond than this. And I'm gonna talk about of AWA. AWA is a chatbot. If you can try it out, go try it out. It's there, you're gonna support, you have to try out. We blew this a lot of effort. It's in-house. So a lot of stuff that you can do, you don't have to call. If you see find the trouble with support, right? Just go to a free fund, five status, booking changes. Click that, add a meals, make booking changes. If you wanna check your flight status, just go to the chatbot, click on the flight status, you'll figure out. It's all being in Python, by the way. Being in one of our services. So we reached the end, but what else we do with Python, right? We have a booking page and a payment page which is running on the Python as well, behind the scene. Uh, another thing is we do a data team using is the predictive analysis. So our data team runs across the Asia stuff, Asia.com stuff. So they have their own team of data team, that's where the data team is. Where did you go? Where did you go? Uh, off. We are pretty much uh, Reddit Q, which is uh, our HQ. So these are stuff like we are doing with uh, Python and stuff. So to answer back to the question, should we deploy on Friday or not? If you don't want to have a weekend, you have a lifeless, go ahead and do it. And that's, that's about it. Thank you so much. And we are hurrying, we are hurrying a lot. So just come to check our booth outside. I'll be there. If you want any technical question, more details.